Hi, my name is Simone Cuomo and today I'm going to show you how to create a toggle for dark and light mode for your website. This is going to use just plain JavaScript and CSS. We're going to use no framework, nothing crazy, and it's really going to be simple to add it to your website. What you see here, it's a very plain page, so just an index.html. We have a heading, a paragraph, and a toggle. And if we go back to the code, you can see that there's absolutely nothing. There's no package JSON, no build. It's really just three files. We have our HTML with the link to the style sheet and link to the JavaScript on the very top. This is important. It has to be in the head. Then we have an empty style that we're going to fill it up as we go along now. And last but not least, oh, we have an empty JavaScript file, not the full JavaScript file. That's what actually what we're going to build now as part of the project. Um, if you've never seen it before, um, uh, let's say we go to Vitpress. So white and dark theme a lot of toggles allows you to uh, change between dark and white theme. Um, and this will then um, support the client to your visitors to actually have a consistent, a consistent view of the website. How do we add it? There are two different important way of adding this. One, you can use the settings of your um, um, you can use the settings uh, on your uh, uh, operation system. So you can see you got light to dark. So we're going to do something that is going to read these settings and apply the theme accordingly to the settings. But we're also going to give a way for the clients to override those settings because not, for example, I cannot use Word in white mode, right, dark mode, but I can use anything else in dark mode. So you always want to be able to override it. Before we can do any of this, we need to first introduce... Um, uh, a little bit of style, but more importantly, we have to introduce something called um, uh, CSS variables. So to be able to actually toggle between different themes, you need to have a style that is based on variables and not individual value. So what do we mean? Let's create, for example, a, uh, some styles. So we're going to give a color red for our H1 and we're going to give a color gray for our paragraph. And then we're going to give a background color of um, beige to our HTML. So um, if we go back to our application, if I refresh, uh, you see that they got those styles now have been applied for my, um, uh, they've been applied. Uh, to my um, to my style sheet to my to my document. Unfortunately, this will not work because if we want to theme it, this will not allow us to theme. And this is where a CSS variable come into place. So CSS variable allow you to define a um, uh, a value that is actually going to be a variable. And instead of say color red, we will then be able to assign a specific variable to it. So what we're going to do, we're going to create one called text adding. Okay, it's going to be red. And then we're going to go another one called text paragraph. And this is actually going to be great, just to replicate what we through. And then background color. And this is going to be beige. What you noticed is that uh, the name of the variable over here is actually, um, I didn't say color red, I didn't say color gray, because these are gonna change depending from the theme that we provide to our users. And because of that, you want to make sure that these variables are actually for the where they will be used and not what color they will. So you don't even want to say light or dark. You actually want to say text heading, text paragraph, because it could be red, it could be white, it could be blue, depending from the theme that you actually create. What we're then gonna do, we're gonna copy these variables and then we're going to go down here, we're going to remove the red and we're going to apply the variable. So to do so, you do var as variable and then you just apply the variable itself. Then we do the same here, var, and then we've got uh, this paragraph. And then last but not least, we have var and then we have uh, background color. So now if I save it and I go here and refresh, the same color will actually be applied. As you can see, nothing changed behind the scene. The only difference is that we actually now have CSS variable. Uh, just for you to be aware, you can actually see the CSS variable also here. 
uh, within your, um, uh, your debugger. So you're able to see and modify the variables if necessary. Now what we want to do is to, um, to actually be able to change and add an extra theme. So what we're doing, we are doing that by uh, using classes. Um, if you were just using the settings, so the user settings, uh, you don't need the class because actually you can use a media query that is available for you. Uh, but for our case, we're actually going to use classes and we're going to do something like this. So we're going to define in the CSS that when HTML has a class of dark, we're then going to change our values. So I'm going to say if it's dark, I want the background to be black. The gray, the, the paragraph, I don't want to change it. And the heading, I want it to be beige. What you notice is that you don't have to override all the variables. So I've done this on purpose. I left the paragraph on purpose because gray, uh, maybe light gray. Um, okay. uh, gray um, is actually should be fine for both themes. So if I refresh now and we go back, you'll notice that nothing changes. And the reason why nothing changes is because we haven't applied this class that we want to apply to the HTML. Um, so we are actually gonna go back down in our code and to try it out, we're just gonna say class dark. Oh, sometimes the, uh, you know, helpful idea, not that helpful. So if I refresh now, you see that the theme has changed and we got our class already. If I go here and remove the class, you see that the theme will change. So this is just a manual way to see what we're trying to accomplish. It's important that this is applied to the HTML and is not applied to the body. Otherwise, the, uh, the, the, this will actually fail when loads because the body is not been set yet. So it's important this is applied to the HTML. So what we want to do now, we want to remove this class because we don't want it to be R coded and we actually want to do it ourselves. Um, how do we do that? That's not, too far, that's not too complicated. In fact, First, we are going to implement, uh, we're going to read the system preferences. Um, to read the system preferences, <clears throat> we need to use something called, something like this. So the Windows object is something called match media that allows you to read a media query. This media query is the one that is set by your settings. So if we go back to settings, what I, use, what I showed you before, the settings have gone. Yeah. So if you go here, if I select dark, this will be dark. If I select light, this will be light. If I select auto, it will be auto. So this will allow you to read those settings. So what you see here, this function is just going to say if this is dark and it matches to dark to dark, otherwise it's going to be light. Um, this is just a simple function, so I could actually just call it and it will return for me white or dark. So what we're going to do with, uh, with this simple function is that we're going to set it to, uh, to be our preferred scheme. So uh, when, when the application loads, we're going to say the preferred scheme is going to be, as you can see, dark or light. And then we're going to um, add the class to our HTML. So if the sorry, if the preferred scheme is dark, then you want to select HTML and add a class. Otherwise, you want to remove the class. Okay. Um, okay, so this is what we got right here. So if I save it now, and I go back to our application and refresh, you see that it turned to dark because my settings are set to dark mode. If I put this to light now, and a refresh, you see that actually now is working appropriately. So just by those, those few lines of code, um, you're able to see that we can actually set the, uh, you know, the white and dark mode, um, you know, very quickly. How many lines? We have 18 lines of code in total, but it's very, you know, um, it's very, uh, uh, very big. Uh, you know, the writing is very big. Unfortunately, not everyone wants to use just, if you just want to use the system preferences, that's fantastic. You can actually, uh, it's even better because you could use this directly in CSS, so you don't need any JavaScript whatsoever. But usually I found out that uh, people and visitors like to actually uh, have ability for them to select the toggle and toggle themselves. So what we're going to do, we're going to actually um, write the information in, um, uh, in the local storage. Uh, you can actually use cookie. If you use cookies, even better for you if you go server-side rendering because you can then read the cookie and render side 
to make sure that it's not flickering. And if the, you will see that there will be no flicker in our case. But we're going to use local storage because it's an easier syntax for us to write. What we're going to do? We're going to um, save things. One second, I'm getting my data over here. So after we set a preferred scheme, okay, we're gonna we're gonna save it to local storage. So local storage now is gonna have a, a item called selected scheme. Um, the reason why it's not using preferred scheme is because we want to be able to read. Uh, uh, we want to be able to um, to read the, the the value that was already preset. So we want to be able, in a way, to override the local uh, the, the settings from our preferences. So what we're going to do, we're going to create actually a uh, we're going to wrap all this in into a function that is going to accept a override scheme. So all this is going to go in our function now. So what you see is that we have an ability for us to override the scheme. And then this is actually going to be like this. So when I call this function, if I do pass something, it's going to use whatever I passed it. If I don't pass anything, it's going to use the preferred uh, scheme from our settings. Then it's going to save that. And then last but not least, we need to make sure that we use here preferred scheme. So again, if I call it with nothing, it's going to use our system. If I call it with dark, it's going to use dark. If I call it with light, it's going to use light. So this is a good, um, you know, um, is a good way through for us to, to, to actually, uh, is a good, you know, is a way for us to override uh, the existing. So what we need to do now, it was, uh, on load, we need to read from our local storage. And then if there's something is going to pass, so for example, if, if this is dark, if there's something saved as dark, so if the user is overriding with dark, it's going to be dark and saved and therefore pass it. If it's the first time they go on it, it's going to be null, therefore you're going to use the system preferences. So this is a very simple, um, very simple way for us to actually um, implement this. So if you go here, you'll see that if I go back to our application, so if I refresh now, it's light. You can see here it's in saying light. If I go in, uh, I can refresh now and it's still light. And if I go on my settings, you see that the settings is dark now, so it's actually dark. And if I go here and change it to dark and then refresh, you see that now it's always going to be dark. So we need to, f the next step is to actually create a toggle that will allow us to change between white and dark. Let's go through. As you may expect, the toggle is just going to call our function. But we have to do, um, uh, what, due to the fact that the JavaScript is loaded before the head, we need to make sure that whatever code we write now to assign to the toggle is triggered after the page loads. Because if we do now document dot get select and buttons, buttons does not exist at the start. It doesn't exist yet. So what we need to do, we have to use document and then we do add event listener. And then we're going to use the DOM content loader. Okay. And then we are going to, within, within this function, uh, we're going to then load our button. Um, query selector. And then we're going to say button. So we just got one button in our HTML. So this is as easy uh, as easy to do. Add event listener. And then we're going to say on click. Okay. It's a bit more verbose because we don't have any framework, but um, it's nice to know that we can do this in JavaScript. So now we have a button. Um, we're listening to a button, a click event. So what do we want to do with the click event? Quite easy. We want to update the scheme, scheme and we want to pass something. What do we want to pass? We want to pass the opposite of what is currently available. So we're going to do this. So if the selected scheme, don't forget we, we set the selected scheme here. So if the selected scheme is equal to dark, then I wanted to set it to light, otherwise to dark. And then here we're going to pass new scheme. 
You may probably realize that if I run this now, it's gonna fail because select the scheme is scoped with this function is not available here. So what we can do, we can actually, yeah. So we can remove this, we put it out, we, put, we set, set this as a let, so now that is available everywhere. Okay, let's go back and see if this actually works. So we got our designs, it's dark, the class has been assigned here. If I click on toggle, you see that now it's actually, it's all white um, and the class has been removed as well. And if you go on application here, you can see that the value of the, the selected scheme is also. So if I do dark and refresh, it's gonna stay dark. If I go white and refresh, it's gonna be white. What you notice is that there's no flickering, look. Actually, there's no flicker. Usually when you do these things, it's, you know, there's always a little flicker if it's done wrong. And mainly it's because they put the, this, this they, they load the JavaScript after the head. But what we're doing ourselves, we're actually um, loading everything and setting the class even before the rest of the content is loaded. And this actually makes our, um, our application non-flickering. Um, so it's a very, you know, it's a very good one there. We have one more thing to do that is actually introducing something called color scheme. Uh, HTML, uh, CSS actually provides a um, um, ability for you to define a color scheme. This can be set for the whole page or specifically for a, uh, a field, for example, an input field. And color scheme will provide a theme for things such as the scroll bar, input field, um, uh, buttons, and so on and so forth. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna create a color scheme here in the HTML, and we're gonna also um, uh, override that color scheme. Oh, sorry, um, we're just gonna change this and then we're gonna set color scheme to light and color scheme to dark. Uh, please notice that it's not actually, it's, it's a string, it's actually, is just, um, you know, it doesn't need to be uh, wrapped in, in, in columns there. So this now will set a color scheme of light for our root and a color scheme of dark for our dark theme. So if we go back to our application, you see now that the button is not white anymore, it's actually, it's dark. And if you go here, you can see that the button is actually uh, white again. As I mentioned before, you can actually override this. So if I go here and write button, I can always say I would like a light color scheme no matter what. So now the whole application will have a dark color scheme, but the button will always be light. So if you go here, light, and if you can see now it's actually it's light and not dark. So what we've done now, we introduce everything such as uh, how to load it, how to load the preferences, how to override the preferences, how to save it in media, in the local storage, and even introduce something as color scheme. Um, there is more that you can learn, so pro probably go and read out about the preferred color scheme to see how it works. You can also, there's also an event that is triggered where the color scheme is changed. So I don't know if you realize, but every time I change the color scheme, uh, the sidebar here changed by itself, I'm not refreshing. And that's because of the, an event of change color scheme that is triggered. So you can also um, enhance the value of uh, our, um, our code to actually do that. But this is really good. Around 20 lines of code, we achieved a color uh, a theme and I really hope it was helpful. And if there's anything else, just comment. Don't forget to also subscribe to our YouTube channel and check our blog at this.co forward slash blog for more of this uh, interesting topic. Bye. This program is presented by This.Labs, the framework agnostic consulting firm helping enterprises realize their technical goals through staff augmentation, consulting, project management, on-demand subject experts, training, and other professional services. Find out more at this.labs.com.